Right, we're back with compare and contrast the tier list segment. Uh, we're doing a part two, I guess. A few weeks ago, we did Sydney bars on a Friday night. Now we're going to do. So now we're moving on to later on in the night. So you go for dinner. So we're doing Sydney dinner spots. Part two um, of a Friday night is essentially what this is. And if you can connect the dots, there may or may not be a part three of and the best. or four. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what's the four? four? The massage yeah. places. That we- no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Karaoke? What's the? Because third will be clubs. What's the fourth? Mate. Modes of Trinana. No, no, no. Nah, it's the. When uh, you're on your way home, mate. The, the, Mac- oh, the paraphernalia the that you do and do or not get. Yeah. Oh, bad. Massage is- parlor, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's your tickle on the way home. Karaoke is also is. not a bad shout, right? Not a bad <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> anyway, let's, let's stop. That's idea, for anyway. another week <laughs> yeah. or two. All right, so we're keeping the same tiers as what we did last time. So just to recap, the top tier is the goat tier. Uh, second from the top is good. If it's mid, it's the serviceable tier. Mm. Uh, below that, it's the last resort. And finally, the bottom one is trash. So we got a few, uh, I think we've got a list of 10 places we're going to tier list. And shout out you guys that sent in some oh, places. Yeah, of course. You know, Sorry. We put the call out on Instagram. Plenty of responses. And we've incorporated some of those in today's tier list. So if you want to get involved, Instagram at Critical Banter, drop us a follow. All right. And with further ado, this is the definitive. Sydney worked in a tier list. Alrighty, first up on the list is Chat Thai. For those who don't know, it's your standard Thai place. Uh, there's one at, I think, in Haymarket and there's one in Circular Quay. Pretty mid, if you ask me. It's your standard Pad Thai, Pad CU, Muscle and Beef, off you go, son. Someone says Chat Thai doesn't make me feel anything. No. I have no will to go, to be I- honest. I'll go if it's close by, because you know what you're going to get. I'll go if someone else has organized it yeah. and I'm just tagging along. But there is no way in hell I am recommending Chat Thai in any conversation. No. Look, they do the basics right, and that's about it. Don't I'm, expect too much from them. I can get the basics at home, a local Thai place. You know, there's that's nothing well. special there. I am going to respectfully disagree because I went last Friday, and quite frankly, it was pretty bad. Like, I had the Pad Thai. It took like 45 minutes to come. And then not only that, the, the flavor profile was all wrong, dude. I hate chat Thai with a passion. Do you reckon the chat actually makes sense globally? <laughs> they should say. It should just be chat. <laughs> We're going to chat. Dude, the green curry was watered down. It was just watery. I was sitting there like, this is actually disgusting. It's like, how can you get Thai food this wrong? Thai food, like I've never had like an ex amazing Thai food place. I've never had a bad Thai food place until that day. Just quietly. I, I love the names of Thai restaurants because they just- they always just have variations of Thai, like La Thai, mm. Here We Go Thai. I, had, I, I went to a thai. Time for Thai. Yeah, I, went to a, I went to a fancy one called Bow Thai. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not good. bad, huh? But Chat Thai, from what I'm hearing, is no Bow Thai at all. I got to say that, to be honest, if in my view, I've I've got to put it in trash. Yeah, I think there's just also too many Thai restaurants, and mm. you can't you, afford to be bad. You can't afford to be bad in this economy, especially no. like nah. So that's we're going trash tier. Trash. Wow. All right, next up is Wing Boy. And as the name suggests, it's just a wing place in Darling Harbour. Wings, and that's about it. Fuck this place. Honestly, I actually think it's run by one boy. Like that, I'm a dead set serious. <laughs> no the men, Wing no, Boy. No <laughs> men in this restaurant, boys. All just boys. And if that's the case, power to it because it's actually named quite correctly if it's mm. just one Wing Boy. What happened? I ordered uh, at 5.30. Granted, the movie's at 6.30. I've got enough time to enjoy my wings, let the wings come in. Especially a place called Wing Boy. Their specialty is wings. They should be pumping They should be able to pump it out. Fair fair assumption. We just ordered two types of wings. $15, by the way. Kind of expensive. How many wings did you get? It's like eight to 10. That's it. That's not bad. (laughs) They're thin though. They're thin. They're actually not that big. Um, Anyway, 6.20. The wings still haven't arrived. So it's been around 45 minutes since we've ordered. The wings have not arrived. They come 6.25 and I'm like, look, Movies have ads. I'm happy to skip the NRMA and budget direct ads. Mm. And off I go the next 10 minutes, we have to smash down these wings and they taste like shit. <laughs> they are salty or they're oversourced. Like there's just no balance. It's actually horrible. I will never go to this place again. And <laughs> to be fair, I've tried it twice, two different locations and both experiences have been terrible. My brother, I'm going to have to redeem it, mate. I went the other day. The flavors are class at Wing Boy. They have mm. like 15 different flavors, like from lemon pepper to like Buffalo to Nashville. Doesn't matter if they can't do any of them well. They did them all well. My experience, they were all lovely. Finger licking at that point. I was cleaning the whole bloody bowl. But I don't is, know what, what you- is, What does Gordon Ramsay say? He, you know, he doesn't like too many things on the menu. No, but the thing is too many. Yeah. No, it's fine. Cause they do stew wings, you know? Gordon Ramsay doesn't want you to do wings and then a steak and then a pizza, and then a pad thai. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they only do wings and sides. And I thought it was lovely. Like every flavor I had gochujang, honey soy, all delightful. $15 I think is not too bad. 
You can go with a group as well. There's lovely group seating. They have beers as well, alcohol. So I think it's a great place. So where are we putting it then? Yeah, this is hard now because we have two very different- Two different ends of the spectrum. Also, can I add another another little- uh, Go on, argue. Uh, TCB here. debate, go on. Yeah. <laughs> we also did, they have a deal, I think, which is $30 or you can eat or something like that, but you have to get chips and a drink as well. Mm. I, I think it's some, some deal like that. But the problem is, as I say, I go with the four of you. All four of us have to order different type of wing and also a different type of side. So we all have to get chips. We all have to get wings. By the time you're done, you're actually pretty much full after $30. So they designed it in such a way that you actually get full after one round. But that's all, all you can eat. All you can eat yeah. buffet, all you can eat this, all you can eat that. They're always not value for money. Yeah. Their deal is I think $70, unlimited wings, sides, and drinks, including alcohol. So I don't, make oh, it that what you will. That's a it's steep. It's steep, but everything is included. I think any buffet, all you can eat over $50, get out of here, you're trash. $70. But all you can eat, drink alcohol because you don't have to have the sides. Like I feel like when you order the wings in the round, yeah, you get your your, your chips and your um, what's it called potato chips. Mm. I reckon you just don't touch those. You just smack the high value items. No protein is, and alcohol. That's it. That's all you need. The the the, the fries and onion rings can go in the bin. They, they like distract you. Yeah. Look for me. It, regardless, I had a poor experience twice. Very saucy. Very salty. In my head, this has to be trash purely because of that. <sighs> and I'll put it good. So, you know, it's it sits somewhere in the middle. Serviceable, dare I suggest. Serviceable. 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 All right, serviceable. All right, so Wing Boy goes into serviceable. So next up we have the Sparrows Mill. Uh, one of my favorites, I will say. It is a Korean fried chicken joint near World Square. And my God, do they have a range of flavors from snow cheese to doesn't really matter. That's all you need. Are you a snow cheese man? No, not really. They have the soy garlic, they have the spicy ones, and then they have just the normal run of the mill I have heard the get- word Gang Jung come out of Rohit's mouth a million times because he froths it big time. I, dude, I love Korean fried chicken and I love the Sparrows Mill. What a name, what an institution. Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one thing, right? Korean fried chicken after work, it hits different. Mm. Because not only do they do the Korean fried chicken, they've got the, the Korean beers as well. And I'll tell you what, it's fantastic combination, mate. I cannot speak more highly of this place. I remember we went one time back in back in uni. Rohit and I were part of some random university society. Didn't really enjoy the social events, but when we heard dinner tonight at Sparrowsville, <laughs> mate, we were number one fans of this society. We were there, <laughs> we were there first, and we left last, mate. <laughs> and you know how typically when you go with a group, it's like we order as a group, and then you you know split the bill evenly, mm-hmm. mate. We got value. Some people having two pieces. Ro and I were having fucking whole plates Half full. chicken, full chickens, deluxe with us. And it's also reasonably priced as well. Like yeah. they do it well. Cause I feel like the thing with Korean fried chicken, there's like a couple of things that can go wrong. Mm. Firstly, you can be too saucy and yep. the sauce balance is all wrong. Like wing boy, right? They balance it perfectly. Then you can get it just overcooked, burnt to a crisp. And the spicy one is not spicy, not too spicy. It like hits that nice balance of it's like a little bit hard to eat, but it doesn't make you, it makes you want more. It's still enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So look, it's inciting these emotions out of you, which feels exactly. like- Exactly. It makes you feel something. And that something is yeah, If a place tier. can make you feel something, get that tingling feeling throughout your body mm. and mm. it's food, not something else, then you've done a great, great thing as a restaurant. And as Rose said, it's, they've got everything and it caters for a group. You can go, as, it's easy to go as a group. You know, some places yeah. like- you think, oh, do we share? Do we get individuals? Mate, chicken, you just order a bunch, order some beers, order some soju, and you share it amongst the table. Dare right. I suggest, is this the best fried chicken in Sydney? No, not the best fried chicken in Sydney, but I think I'll put this in the good tier. All right, so Sparrow's Mill will go into the good tier. Next up, we have Bar Luca, a oh. Sydney institution. We spoke about this uh, in the drinks tier list. We put it pretty low, actually. Mm. But now it's here to redeem itself in the food edition. And so- Kush, I'm going to let you describe what is Bar Luca and what are they known for? Bar Luca is Blame Canada and Blame Canada is Bar Luca. That's the only way to describe it. <laughs> Look, there's a combination of Bar Luca. When I first had, when I f- very first time I had the burger, it was the burger, some chips on the side and a milkshake as well. Granted, you don't eat for the next 12 days, but that combination is just pure class. And mm. the milkshakes are actually really good as well. They always have a special milkshake and they also have a special like drink as well, like alcohol, if you'd really want to go down that path. But just for me, blame Canada, the mixture of the poutine, <sighs> the patty, the bun, it's just glass. Is Bar Luca a good workplace to eat though? No, because we spoke about this last time. It's too small and you have to book to get in. And I will say with the food, the burgers are class, right? We went the, what's the blame Canada? 
They, they've yeah. got so many different the versions flame of burgers. The, the blame, flame cannon. The blame canook, I think is what they call it. That is <laughs> class, bro. There's like heaps of good burgers, but I will say the sides are trash. Like the, the fries are fine, but the chicken wings, I hate it. They were too dry. Oh. And quite frankly, you know, could go in the bin. For I got like the it. mac and cheese one time. I got like the corn ribs. They were, they were all right. They were actually okay. They yeah. weren't inspiring like the Blame Canada. Yeah, but like the the burgers are the best part. There's all, they've all, their special burgers are also really good sometimes. And, and, and it starts with Blame. They also had the Blame India. Oh, class. What, what a meal that was that, actually. That was, that was fantastic. Class. But I'm thinking more the optics of it. If you're with your workmates and you're there deleting a massive burger, grease running down your hands, that is not a good look. But uh, It's a very niche place to go because there are a lot of people that don't, there are a lot of people that don't mind burgers. There are a lot of people that don't like a big, messy, like creates a whole mess. They want simple burgers, especially as Sen said, you're with work friends, you know, with work people, you don't want fucking poutine all over your mouth and you're running down your hands. But I don't think you're getting ostracized for suggesting by, uh, yeah, by Luca. Luca. I think, I think people- You gotta suggest yes. it to the right people, I feel. You can't throw it I, out to everyone. I actually think it's completely fine, but especially if the idea is I wanna have dinner and I want a nice meal, you're going to Bar Luca, like, especially with a burger as well, you're going there. I've heard you say it's the best burger in Sydney, Kush. Has Bar Luca maybe fallen off a cliff the last few years? Look, I'll tell you what, Bar Luca at one time had the best burger in Ooh. Sydney. But now? But now, look, the Blame Canada has deteriorated slightly in quality. The balance is all wrong. It's still a good burger, mind you, especially when you're comparing it to other burger places. Are they just going off the name? They know people are coming because it's Bar Luca, the Blame Canada. They can get away with, you know, subpar ingredients, subpar mechanics. I think that's it, but they are, do have better, like I said, the other burgers, the other Blame variations, the Canoe. A lot of Blame. The blame Indias, the blame uh, other countries, if you'd like to put it out. <laughs> but they're all very good burgers. They are, they are. And so I like, I wouldn't mind saying Bar Luca may be one of the best burger spots in Sydney. So where are we putting it on the tier list? I think for me, this is actually a good spot, especially because it's a dinner place. And because of that, I think I'm going to put it in good. If you asked me a few years ago, I would have agreed. I think it's come down a tier in my opinion. I think it, for me personally, it should be in the serviceable. But I'm happy to- put oh, I think it's it. also serviceable. I'm thinking about logistics. Small venue, have to book. It's not easy to get to. Burgers, I also feel is, I maintain it. Niche food genre, serviceable for me. Look, I am happy to put in serviceable because I've not been there for a while. And to be honest, the only time I'd go now is if they had a cool special. I'm not going straight for the Blame Canada anymore. So serviceable it is. All right, next up on the list is Bar Toddy's. Uh, Italian restaurant in the city uh, run by Justin Hams and Maryville, the absolute grubs. Bar Toddy's is actually just for basic bitches. I'll be completely mm, honest. So like, overrated. The whole bread thing, what are you like ancient Romans making sourdough bread? Like, <laughs> 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 Not even the right bread. <laughs> it's not even the right bread, first of all. And uh, it's just the social media hype around it. Like, mm. It's the, all over social media, man. The amount of times that I've seen eat in Sydney or Jess eats in Sydney bites with <laughs> Sydney. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I see- Five someone, places you must try. Oh my, and I see someone pop that damn bread. It's like, oh, if I got dislike on TikTok, I probably would if I ever saw that. Mm. I've seen, I swear I've seen like the top five hidden places in Sydney. Hidden there, reckon. And they put bar toddies. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah, it's on every right. second fucking Instagram story on a Friday. Dude, yeah, I agree with the, the bread analogy. Dude, horrible. That's the only reason people ever go to bar toddies. I went, it was all right, but the rest of the menu didn't really care for. Yeah. Because the thing is, the, the problem is, if you don't like the, the concept of buying a big bread and buying your own toppings, you're going to hate it. So all the point is you buy that big fucking pillow of bread yeah. and then you buy a bit of tomatoes, a bit of cheese, a bit of meat on the side and then you DIY it on the table. It basically is a Mind concept. you, that bread was what? 20 or 30 the bucks? The bread is well? expensive. It $20 is bread. for Go flour. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <Levin's> flour. <laughs> and they have pasta on the menu, about 50 bucks. It's Bullshit. steep, it's so steep, but they can get away with it because everyone wants to Instagram it. it and that's the thing, when you put the bread with all the little plates and little sides, it looks lovely on the Instagram. Hey, but hatred aside, <laughs> Sen's given us an honest opinion on the food. Manny, what do you think about the I food liked objectively? It. I liked the food. You know, I went there, got the bread, the bread was lovely, seasoned well, nice little salt on it. All the sides are great. The meat, you know, spreadable, induya, I believe is how you say the word, <laughs> cheese, tomatoes, lovely. It's all lovely. I like it, but it is steep. Every time I take that one bite of the bread, all I hear is ka-ching, that's $6 down the drain. You can't get past the- I can't get past it. How much is it per person? Bartotis, you're spending, like if you go with a group, yeah. oh, you're spending at least 50 to 60 per person. I, I reckon would even say more. more even. I reckon even more, 50 to 60 if you're doing little Yeah, because you're there, they love a spritz there. That's their menu. Like they've yeah. got five different spritzes or something. You're plowing a few drinks. Right? It's not, not a cheap place to be. But I think we should also take into consideration the aesthetics the social credits you get by posting that you went to Bar Toddy's. Absolutely. And I feel like if you're in the work group chat, 
and someone's like, where should we go for dinner? And you say, I've booked Toddy's, mate. You're, mate. you're in everyone's good books Applause at that point. deluxe, you know? Yeah. Everyone's happy to shell out the 50, 60 bucks, yeah. but you're a hero. Cause I, I actually think the social status that you get by saying Toddy's or posting about Toddy's, you know, love it or hate it. You get it. You're cultured. You are so cultured. Mm. You're not throwing out Maccas, you know? You're a tier above. Does that add anything to the rating here? But can you get better bread somewhere else? Objectively, yes. yes. Can you? Wait, like, I've, but like, I, I haven't been to Bar Toddy's, might, granted, but I've heard the bread is spectacular. It Fair. is. I've, I have to say it is. It was, it was good bread, but not for $30. <laughs> That's the thing. It's just too pricey for that kind of bread. You're priced like you, out. Yeah, you can have that bread, honestly, and I think most bakeries, a similar type of taste. You honestly could, but it's just so pricey and it's not worth it. So for that alone, I just, I have to consider all of that. I mm. think for me, it's serviceable. Now, considering everything, I love, I like the food. But considering the you know, price and all that, I have to agree. It has to be serviceable. I can't put it any higher, but I can't put it any lower. The bar toddies will be inserviceable. I like it. Next up, we have Bell's Hot Chicken in Barangaroo. Um, as the name suggests, it is just a chicken shop. Again, I think we've named a couple of chicken shops at this point. But it's more like an American fried chicken. Correct. It's more vibe. westernized. Uh, it's more, you know, your wings, you got sandwiches, you got tenders. tenders. Um, and the whole gimmick here is, as the name suggests, hot chicken. So they got six levels of heat. Level two is hot <laughs> and it just goes up from there. They got level six, which is the highest. And you know what it's called, Kush? What is it called? Sex Panther. Oh. That is a shocking name. So I've tried Sex Panther before and it's the worst decision I've made in my life. <laughs> and then you had the chicken. I was actually so close to drinking the water out of Darling Harbor. That's how fucking hot it was. Jesus. It's like that chemical taste. It's not, yeah. it's not a nice spice. Yeah. It's novelty. It's no. It's not really. It's that like it drinking battery acid. It's genuinely. The, the thing where I have the problem with Bell Chicken is, like you said, there's six levels of spice. I reckon you can, but you can only get the first two because anything from three above is actually too spicy. Yeah. The Sex Panther I've never tried, but like Mick said, that's a novelty. No one's supposed to eat that. But even three, four, and five are too much. And I'm Indian. I'm brown, bro. I can handle my spice. <laughs> and even that for me was way too many. In terms of the food itself, it's pretty mid. I'm not going to lie. It's so average. It's just average, man. It's just there. Like the sandwich is all right. The tenders I don't care for and the wings are trash. So really you're only going for one thing and that's the sandwich. And it's like this big. It's the size of a cheeseburger from Macca's. Mm. And, it's and on, you're paying 14 bucks for it. Yeah. And it's on brand So the prices, you know, they can hike it up a little. It's just, I, I wouldn't, I don't recommend it. Cause it's like, it's like the, the spice as well, even on the lower levels is not good. It's not tasty. Like. It, it, it's like you said, the chemical flavor. Like I think the seasoning, it looks colorful. It looks like red and looks really appealing, but I would say it's not all there. I think all this is actually one of its only positives because it's not the greatest place. It's easy to book, mm, right? Yeah. You're there 4 p.m. Friday. You need you realize you forgot you need to book a place for work. You can always hop on bells, you know, dot com, whatever their domain URL is. You book a table. You can book for like 12 at that point because yeah. it's not hot in demand. So it's there as an option, but I, it's nowhere near first, second or third. Last resort, I have to put in this last resort. This is quintessential last, last resort. resort. If you need a place, they've got spots and you can book it straight away. All right, so Bells will sit in last resort. Next up, we have Jimmy's Falafel. Uh, the brother of Bar Toddy is also owned by the Merivale Group. Uh, boys, what do we think of this one? I love Jimmy's. I love, if I could meet Jimmy, I'd shake his hand and say, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Good falafel, brother. Great falafel. Great. They're sujuk, bro. Their Turkish sausage is mm. immaculate. I also, I just love the design of the wrap. I, I love it. It's like this, it's filled perfectly and it gets bigger from the first bite. Oh. Like it's just a beautiful technical way of creating a, a wrap, which I just got to respect. And yeah, I, I went for my first time once, but it's value as well. The wrap, I, I, when I went, it was like under 20 for like a combo or something, but it's huge. Massive. Massive. You can, normally when I go to these sort of work dinners, or whatever, I'm, like, oh, I'm not going to get filled up because, you know, yeah. decorum, can't order too much, whatever. <laughs> but one wrap, brother, it sets you back. The stomach was full and full of goodness. Oh, the mm. chips are also well salted. Oh, oh, I was going to say about the chips, man. The I chips. froth the chips. I absolutely love it, dude. The, <laughs> the chips are so well seasoned. Like I don't like eating too much chips, calories and that, yeah. but I'll tell you what. <laughs> these are calories <laughs> worth Continuing. demolishing. Absolutely. I'll polish them off so quickly. <laughs> Dare I suggest if you go in a group and there's chips on the table, reach for those first because those bad boys are going to go. Especially with Roe, mate. They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> I, I would agree. I actually really, really like Jimmy's. Even though it is Middle Eastern food for white people, mm. it's pretty decent. So what are we saying? Are we saying good, perhaps? The is one it negative I will give it is it's because of all this, it's busy. I had yeah. to line up to get a table and I only just about got a table because me and the two friends I was with, we were willing to sit at the bar. I did the same thing. I went and I didn't book beforehand. So we had oh. to stand out there, put our name on the list and they said, 
40 minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, it's good, but we'll wait. It's yeah, worth you're it. You're willing to wait. You're willing to wait. And the good thing is the location. The location's lovely. It's right in the heart of- Opposite of Wynyard Station as well. Exactly, where things are, man. Some of these other places, you're not close. This, yeah. you're right there. So Jimmy's falafel, we're saying good tier. Good, 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 good. 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 All right, so brother Jimmy will go into the good tier. Um, next up, we have the Bavarian. It's a German themed bar slash restaurant. So they do a whole lot of beers and they also do German food, which I thought didn't exist, but it's like <laughs> your roast porks, your sausages. Your knuckles. Yeah, the knuckles. Uh, what do we reckon, boys? It's not cheap. It's exp- The it's, price point is high. It's unbelievably expensive for what you're paying for. This was a problem. There was, uh, I'll tell you a little story. There was one Wednesday where we actually went pretty much once a week. It was one month deal where it was $10 chick chinities. Oh. And we abused that on a Wednesday. That's a lovely deal. That is a great deal. Yeah. It's never come out ever since again, since that one month. You probably ran him out of business, mate. <laughs> yeah, probably. Too many chicken schnitties. Oh, but like for $10, all that was worth. I mean, if you just bought, if you weren't that hungry, you said, I just want some mac and cheese on the side. That's $11. Really? <laughs> yeah. The mac and cheese is more expensive yeah. than the schnitty? You're better off getting the chicken schnitty at that point in time. The Bavarian peaked about seven years ago when they had a 10 cent wing deal. I was going to talk that about that as well. The, oh, that was the, if that yeah. still existed, I could argue for goat to hear, but it, that was the greatest deal, but they do nothing good aside from that. Yeah. And look, I understand, you know, cost of living, inflation, COVID, mm. got to do what you got to do. But at the same time, you're not doing what I want to do. So they have no redeeming qualities, man. Yeah. There's nothing good about the Bavarian. There's nothing that made me choose there. Yeah. If the German food is not even authentic, man. That, that's another thing as well. It's, it's very, very whitewashed. So I went once a few years ago, they had an all you can eat deal for $30. Um, so you get a plate of literally uh, like sausages, pork belly, knuckles, and chicken wings. And then to get more, you have to finish your entire plate. Mm. So you battle through all that. And really, to be honest, the only good part of the plate was the pork belly. And so we're like, you know, we want to get more just the pork belly. And they're like, no, if you refill, you got to get everything. <laughs> like, mate, I don't want any fucking glizzies. I just want the pork belly. And so we had to sit through another plate just to get even more pork belly. And by the end, I was like, this is not worth it. And then on them, sick. Yeah. And then on the menu, they have secret like service charges and all that. Mm. You know, additional 10% if you're a party of one or more or something. That's a lie, but they have service fees like that. And then as well, that 10 cent wing, they got greedy and greedy over this. This is what turned me off, right? When it began, it was 10 cent wings, order as many as you want, right? And the next it was 10 cent wings with one drink purchase, which I'm like, yes. am I getting a $10 beer right now just to get some 10 cent yeah. wings? Yes, actually, that it was all right. <laughs> but then it became 10 cent wings with a drink purchase, maximum of 10 wings per drink. Oh. So just to get some drinks, some decent amount of wings, they're tiny wings as well. I have to get like two, three drinks. So and now they don't even do the deal anymore. Yeah, Greedy. Yeah. Bavarian's greedy, man. <laughs> all right, so we hate Bavarian, but are we saying it's as bad as Chat Thai or is it better? I would say one step above because of the deals that they throw out periodically. So and I'm you can, and you can have some drinks, you know, you can, you can be there to- Continue your night. It's not really a handbrake where you can continue drinking. That's it. That's about it though. All right, Bavarian, last resort. Next up we have 678. It's a wonderful Korean barbecue joint. There's one, there's two in the city and there's a few out our way as well. And I got to say, it is the spot to go to after dinner. Mate, this is our go-to Korean barbecue spot. How many birthdays of us have I been? And it's been 678. Birthdays, work events, family events, doesn't matter, mate. I've been there. I love it. It's the backdrop of our Instagram story after time, mate. We love it. I gotta say the sides are spectacular. Look, I can only judge by the meat and the sides in a Korean barbecue, because to be honest, we're cooking the food ourselves. So, you know- I can't, <laughs> That's a separate gripe you have. I can't, I can't judge the cooking, you know what I mean? But I would say the sides six, seven, eight are fantastic. Okay, you've got the Kim cheese of the world. There's like a salad that they do with like the orange sauce. We have a guy, we have a friend who's vegetarian. He doesn't eat anything at six, seven, eight, except for the salad. <laughs> That's all he eats. And, and he enjoys sweet. it. And he enjoys he it. He loves it. So. Oh, look, I have nothing. I'm not a, a single bad word about six, seven, eight because the quality of the meat is actually good as well. I got to say, like the 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 pork bellies, the wagyu beefs. Honestly, I can't fault it. I was going to say that the one good thing marbling. that differentiates these places is the meat, the quality of the meat. But you're mm. saying this is top tier. This is top tier. And I've been to a lot of Korean barbecue places. They don't enable you know a good time. You know, they're like you've had too much to drink, or we're not serving you drinks, or they're very stop start with you drinks. This place loves it. They let you do basically whatever you Dude, want, really. It's a really. free for all, bro. It's a, like, you can do literally anything. <laughs> you, you, you give a, a bottle, mo- you come in with your sojus, your BYO, you use their sojus, you just drink in a way, and it's honestly such a good Dude, time. Dude, and any given Friday, you can find the grad cohort of Deloitte, PwC, KPMG, and EY just across the whole 
you know, for It's a networking shop. opportunity. It is. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and then they enable us so much. Remember we had a mate, he's like, oh, we got to leave because our mate chunded in the barbecue. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> they love a good time there. In the barbecue. <laughs> in the barbecue. Oh. That's why they couldn't stop and chat. They had to beeline out. And the good thing is it's such a massive place. So you can always yeah. get oh, a spot. Mate. They have plenty of venues as well. It's unreal. Where are we putting it, boys? Oh, dude. Is this the GOAT Sydney spot? In my opinion, this is GOAT. This has got to be right to the top. Because it absolutely is the best Korean barbecue spot. That's without a doubt. And I don't know if there's any other cuisines or restaurants that even top it. So it has to be. All right. So 678 is the GOAT we got so far. We got two more. So next up is Arisan, which is in Chinatown and is another Korean place where they have barbecue and fried chicken. I believe we've all been, right? It's, yep. it's good, but food's nothing. It's nothing special. It doesn't scream out to me. You know, you can bring drinks. It's, it's a big venue. You can drink there, but- the most important thing about this place is its significance. You're going mm. for the vibes. Everyone knows what Arisan is. Yeah. Everyone knows what to expect when you suggest Arisan and it is a good time. That is true. When I hear we're going Arisan, I already know. There's you a know the level that we're going to get tonight and I'm excited for you it. You know, it's not just dinner, right? Yeah. If all these other places, most of them you suggest, you don't know. It could be dinner and bounce. It could be dinner and have a drink after. Arisan, you know, it's just beginning. Yeah. yeah. So you're, it, you're in for a good one tonight. So it's a great place to suggest if you want, you know, in non-directly say, Let's have a big one. And it's fun because you go there and you often see your mates from other firms working oh, there Oh, well. that is class. You go you there, you gar- you're guaranteed other people are there, man. <laughs> guaranteed sesh for sure. Exactly. Mate, it's such a good time. I went there once, I was on another table just to suss the vibes because my group just started. This other group was knee deep in beers. You know, you could tell they had like 10 drinks for water. Yeah, and one of the guys like, oh, I'll be back, I'm going to the bathroom. And he's like, does anyone have a key? <laughs> <laughs> if I need to say more, <laughs> I won't say more, but you know, you take that as you will. He came back full of energy and love and life. So you know what? <laughs> That's the sort of energy you get at Ari Sun. Dude, I, I gotta say, doing lines at a restaurant is wild. I've actually never heard of that before. <laughs> but but I love, dude. Even the owners at Ari Sun are fucking loose as fuck. Because there was a few times where we could have just walked out without paying. Like we all honestly got outside, we forgot we paid, and the goodness of our heart, we went back inside. But we could have just kept walking our way, and would have been none the wiser. So that for that alone, you can get a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> Push comes to shove. <laughs> so if you want a free meal, you go. You know where to go. So where are we putting it, lads? It's got to be. It's not goat tier. It's not six, seven, eight. Because the food is. The food it's is lacking mid. a little. The food is actually mid. I'll, I'll say that for free. Like I, I don't. It really does the job. Like love the food. It just yeah fills your stomach. But if you want a good time on a Friday night, this is the place mm. to go. So we're gonna have to say. I think good. 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 All right. So Harrison goes in good, and we're up to our final one. We've left this one for last for a reason. So boys, you know what's coming. We all have a lot to say about this one. So finally we have Chinatown Noodle King. My Lord, this is the place to be. This is the goat of all spots. This is the rite of passage for every corporate graduate in Sydney. You can't be in Sydney and not have gone here. You can't have worked at a big four or a bank or a law firm and not have had one rough night at CNK. So for those that don't know what it is, then what is it? It is the quintessential dirty Chinese restaurant in the city. And the best part is it's BYO. I'll tell you what, boys, this is the only place where I'm okay to excuse child labor. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, they've got kids there working. Working, I will say. I don't know if they're being paid or not, but- Normally the kids are there, but doing homework in the corner. They're literally serving <laughs> you. But yeah, this kid is doing his homework on the side. And then every few minutes, his parents will make him go give a fried rice to table 32. Or whatever. <laughs> the BY the BYO is class. It's right across the street. That's oh, yeah. something a lot of places BYO and you have to bring it from home or you have to you know, go out of your way. Bro, there's a red bottle literally across the street. Dude, they have to be in cahoots together. They mm. have to be working together. So if you Surely. run out of drinks, you don't have you don't even have to think. You just beeline it across the street, buy a fucking ten bottles of soju or wine or whatever you want, bring it right back. Good time. And the best thing, the serving sizes are massive. Yes. Dude, they just plonk this massive, you know plate of rice enough for a whole African village and you just go hell for leather on it. Not only that, the dumplings, dude. The dumplings are literally so cheap. It's such a good place to go after work because you're not paying a lot and you're getting so full and so lick it up, you know? And then in the bowls, you also have the flavor from the last meal that that they ate because they don't- They um, didn't clean it properly. They didn't clean it properly, I could excuse that. And I was gonna say, they pump out the food because they don't even have to wash the place. They just put it straight back on. (laughs) I have literally, every single time I've got, I've picked up the bowl and I've- Seen some remnants. I was about to say, there's just something so authentic. Dude, about, that's what it is. It's a, a, authenticity. About uncaring service. The mm. fact that they don't give a fuck, it just makes me want to go, I'm eating there. I'm uh, coming back. And not to mention, of course, it's cash only. 
Mm. Oh, yes. So you get a little discount if you pay by cash. If you pay with card, they allow it. I mean, they'll argue with you for a bit, but they'll allow it. But otherwise, it's cash is king here. And then the ATO. And then the upstairs, they've got big booths. Oh, upstairs is where the party starts. Exactly. They have five or six big booths, and it gets so loud and rowdy up there. There's so many times where it's been someone's birthday, and I'm there with my mates, and they all start singing happy birthday. And before you know it, the whole restaurant is singing happy birthday and, you know, going, you know, he's to so so, he's true blue, and making him skull drinks. No responsible serving of alcohol here. <laughs> Fantastic. Dude, where's this going to go? I think we all know where this is going to go. There's only one place this can go. This it's is, right to the top. This deserves to be next to 678 in the goat category. CNK is at the goat tier, and that is our final one. So, Miguel, please so tell our, us what the tier list looks like. We have our starting 11. At the back, in trash tier, we have Chat Thai. Fair enough. Last resort, we have Bells and Bavarian. Surf's will, we have Wingboy, Bar Luca, and Bar Toddies. In the good tier, we have Sparrow's Mill, Jimmy's Falafel, and Ari Sun, and my friends right at the top. We have two goat restaurants. We have 678, and we have Chinatown Noodle King. I believe we have covered them all. If there's any restaurants we missed, we have put the call out on Instagram. Make sure to follow us so you don't miss the next one. Let us know if we missed any. Instagram DM us or whatever, and stay tuned for, as we alluded to, part three and or part four. <laughs>